Oh, good morning, all. Well, we're out in the shop today to give the 94 Ford pickup a little attention. And what needs attention? Ah, oh, the drum brake. Frustrating mechanics and home gamers alike since 1900. Uh, this piece of technology is still with us, uh, not due to its efficacy in helping your vehicle stop, but due to its economic viability. It is cheaper to put these on vehicles, even today, uh, than it is to put on disc brakes. Uh, well, I personally would rather pay a little extra for my vehicle than to ever have to deal with these things. Uh, this, since I bought this truck, which I've only had it about a year, but uh, this particular drum has been tore apart and put back together multiple times, everything replaced, and it's still a problem. I even took it to an actual mechanic, and I'm still having trouble. So I've decided that today is the day that I start leading a drum brake free lifestyle. So to that end, we have this beauty. Uh, this is from Little Shop Manufacturing out of Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, and is a disc brake conversion kit. Uh, very reasonably priced. Check out their website. It's about 600 bucks or so. Um, and I've got to say, you know, the kit's not on the truck yet, so we'll see how this all turns out. But I am relatively impressed with Little Shop Manufacturing thus far in the sense that one, I ordered it on a weekend and I had this thing on you know, the following Wednesday. So uh, three day turnaround time is pretty good considering I don't live in Tennessee. Uh, two, I emailed them just asking, you know, I said, hey, I bought this kit for your you know, 94 Ford. Just wanted to ask if this kit was actually made in the USA or if you're just kind of repackaging it. And not only did I get a, that was after five on a Friday. Not only did I have a response like an hour later from uh, Skyler, he also said, oh, by the way, the kit that you ordered is new. We just developed it and we don't yet have instructions for it. Uh, so, you know, here's a CAD drawing kind of showing what you need to do. And then from there, you can pick up from page 10 of this other set of instructions. So very you know very responsive and very helpful so you know signs are promising uh that this is going to go well the the one concern that i do have is that it does say state on their website fits you know most 15 inch wheels uh are acceptable um we'll see you know with my luck i'm going to get this all together and the wheels aren't going to go on um but let's get this thing started. I am not going to show you the entire build process. I'm, you know, going to show you the parts of the process that I get hung up on or that I think might be useful to someone else trying to install this. But, you know, definitely not going to show the entire thing. That would just be a waste of time. So I'll show you anything that trips me up or that I think might be helpful along the way. Ah, well, uh, the morn has morphed into late afternoon, but uh, I did take a bit of a break. Um, but as you can see, one side is completed. Uh, I know this looks like a lot of a lot of tools. You won't need all of these, uh, but there's a lot of trial and error. Uh, yeah, install wasn't too bad, except for one major thing. Let's walk over to the other side. Uh, while we're doing that, um, Skyler did let me know. It is American-made. They design these in-house. They're made in Tennessee. So, yeah, 100% American-made. Well, maybe not 100%, but the product is American-made, so that was awesome. Anyway, so here's the other side. Clearly, drum brake components removed. So, with this kit, it is designed to not require you to remove the axles to install it. But you do have to get the backing plate off, and guess what? You can't do that if your axle's in. So, you know, they recommend that you cut this in half. Easier said than done. Um, 
at least that was my uh, my experience. So if I were doing this all over again, I'd probably just remove the axles. Um, you know, you can replace the differential fluid at the same time. It's probably not a bad idea. However, I already did one without removing the axle, so I'm gonna do the second the same way. Uh, in the instructions, you know, they don't have you take out the, the brake cylinder here. I do recommend removing this and I'll show you why. So let me take that off and I'll get back to you. Okay, so we got our brake cylinder removed, got the brake lines disconnected, and you're kind of ready to go. So tip, keep these flange bolts and nuts installed for the moment, because what we're gonna do, you want this to be held very tightly, and we're actually gonna cut starting here and cut out on a diagonal so that you have a nice V and you can get your you can then get your grinder uh, in there because this is quite tight. Um, this was a real bitch. So, so what you're gonna do, or at least this is what I did. Take your reciprocating saw with a bimetal blade and you're probably gonna want multiple of those and then just cut out a V. So let's get that done. And I do recommend wearing a full polycarbonate face shield. Okay, so now once you've got your notch painstakingly cut out, uh, we only need, with the grinder, to cut from here to here. You do not need to cut this little vertical section. You only need to cut this horizontal section, because that vertical section, once you've cut your other side, you're just going to be able to bend it and break it. So you don't have to worry about trying to get something tiny down in there. Okay. Done with that, not sure how well you can see it, but anyway, it is cut through and that's all you need. You can leave that little tab uncut. Then you can take out these flange bolts, the four of them, flip this thing around and we're gonna do roughly the same thing to the other side. Okay, I was leading you poor folks astray. So actually don't rotate this 180, just rotate it 90 degrees because if you rotate it 180, there are a lot of bulges and whatnot on this side of the, the back plate. And that's gonna make it harder to cut through. Trust me, I know that's the side I did. And this is the part I did on the other side. So only rotate it 90 degrees. Now the problem with that, the flange is not a square, it's a rectangle. So only one bolt is actually gonna even approximately line up, but that's fine. You can tighten it down enough and you know, this isn't going anywhere. Now, when you do your cuts, Try to cut to this bolt because that, you know, then you're only going to have a teeny tiny little tab of metal hanging on. You'll be able to bend this back and forth and uh, just snap it off, hopefully. So again, we're going to cut with the reciprocating saw as far as we can. Try to get a good chunk out of there. And then we'll finish it off with the grinder. Okay, so we've got kind of a V-ish cut, and then just gonna come with the grinder and just cut horizontally there to get that bottom tab cut off. Okay, so we've got our our cuts made, my bolt removed, and now in theory, we should be able to bend this back and forth to get it off. Of course, I'm not gonna be able to do it while holding the camera, so we'll be back. Okay, so from here on out, things really aren't too bad. Uh, one thing to note, so on here, on your pieces, you've got a spacer, your brake line bracket, and your caliper bracket. Uh, the order of operations on this, and these all go on the inside of the flange. You're going to put your spacer. Then... Then your caliper bracket with the little notch. There's a notch right there that goes up. And that slips on, and yeah, how am I gonna hold all this? And then your brake line bracket goes the other way, about like so. And we'll run our bolts through, get this mounted, and be good to go. 
Okay, so from here on out, the installation, you know, was pretty pretty easy. No real uh, no real surprises, um, except one. So on each caliper, I got the kit that has the parking brake uh, provision. So going through the instructions, this is going to be mounted like so, and your parking brake is going to be coming from the front and goes into goes into this hole and then threads through that spring and then comes out the other side and locks in in this little tab no big deal now problem though is that on these I can get this to stay okay so on this it has to come the cable has to come through this kind of closest to this side of the spring and come out on this side of this bracket so that it can slip through this hole and be retained by by this now problem this spring uh the end of it here this little d shaped section is in the way you cannot get the cable through here cleanly and looking at their photos in the other set of instructions that I was sent, this spring actually needs to be pulled out and rotated so that this flat piece is on the other side out of the way so that you can run the, the cable through here. Uh, that was a pain. So, you know, it's a fairly strong spring. Uh, I had some difficulty there, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. But anyway, pull that out, rotate it, put it back in, and then, you know, the rest of it's pretty much self-explanatory. Well, morning, folks. We're back. Uh, the nature of competing priorities being what they are. It's taken two days to wrap this project up. Uh, oh, I think final note for actual install is on the driver's side. The brake line. This guy significantly shorter than on the other side. So you have way less, uh, way less slack. So there were some bends in the tubing here, and you kind of have to straighten those out in order to get the required length to get to here. I mean, it's really tight. The other side was, was relatively easy. This one's, you're going to have just enough, but, but yeah, if you straighten out Straighten out the bends in this, you should get enough to get in there. Well, so here we are, end of project, sort of. Uh, the wheels, uh, my 15 inch wheels did fit. These are the factory, uh, factory wheels. Uh, barely, I mean, it's close, it's very tight, but uh, no rubbing of any kind. Uh, I need to re-bleed them though. Uh, there is a very specific bleeding procedure that they specify, which actually involves rotating the entire caliper assembly so that the bleeder valve is in the 12 o'clock position. So basically straight, uh, directly perpendicular to the ground. Um, and that is something I didn't do. And while it is breaking pretty well, uh, the pedal feel is you know, just slightly mushy. So I think I got most of the air out, but not all of it. Um, other thing of note, the parking brake is not 100%. Um, I, I don't know, I went and found maybe a 15 degree grade, just a side street, and I was able to get the parking brake to hold on that, um, but then I went over to a slightly steeper street and it would not, it would not hold. So um, I probably need to play around with maybe tightening those cables up just, just a tick. Uh, but overall, it is working, uh, and I'm happy with it. The install, except for cutting off the backing plates, was not bad. Um, so, yes, would I do it again? Certainly. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with it, and I never have to deal with drum brakes again. So uh, if you have any specific questions, uh, put them down below, and I'll be happy to answer them on you know what tools I used, what... You know, what, if any, other issues or techniques uh, you might be wondering about. But I've put basically all the gotchas 
into this video. So thanks for watching and until next time, farewell.